Hey everybody, Victoria Moore from Project Grief and this is the last in my video series for Grief Transformation Week. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed every video that I've done so far um, and that this last one will continue to be something that will uh, be of benefit to you. And thank you if you've liked some of my videos um, so far or if you've taken the time to watch them. So today, in the last um, of this series, I just want to talk about this thing called completion. Um, completion is very different to the word closure. A lot of people um, get caught up in this idea of closure. Um, so they will think that, oh, if only I had closure um, over this event, if only I see justice done, um, then I will feel okay. Oh, I'll get closure if I go and visit the grave. I'll get closure if I go to do this event. I'll get closure if I do that. So this idea of closure comes from the thoughts that you have that if you do X, Y or Z, you will feel better. That is mostly wrong. Um, you tend to not feel better if you see justice done because you're still left with all of the feelings that you have that led to the event that um, saw justice being done in the end. But that justice doesn't mean that it automatically negates everything you've gone through, all of the ups and downs and all of the trials and tribulations and all of the things that the other bits of injustice you didn't get either from that particular story or in your life to date. So this idea of closure, we don't talk about when it comes to recovery from grief. And obviously this is not a therapy program anyway. This is an education program that completely transforms your life um, by giving the tools that you need to recover from your loss. So completion is an entirely different thing. Completion comes from getting to say all of the things that you've ever wanted to say that you've not been allowed to say because either the person died, they left you, or even if they're alive, you still don't get to say what you wanted to say because the person that you want to say it to won't hear you. They simply won't agree with your viewpoint. They won't give you the time to say what you want to say. They will interrupt you. They don't see it in the same way that you see it. So guess what? You still get that feeling of incompletion. So I want you to imagine, um, to give you an example of this, that you've decided you're going to end your relationship because even though you love your partner, they're just not doing the things that you want them to do. They're not behaving the way you want them to. And you just don't see this relationship continuing in any way that's going to make you happy. So you've spent the day um, going over and over and over everything and you've decided that you're going to finish and end the relationship and that you've rehearsed your script well and that when you see them, you're going to say this. And then in your mind there, they're going to say that. And then you're going to say this, they're going to say that. And so you've got this whole script prepared of what you're going to say to your partner when you see them to end it. So you go home and you're dreading it and you feel sick and you're, oh my gosh, I've got to finish this. So you keep going, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this. So you get home, you put the key in the door, you open the door and there's a the smell of cooking. And you walk in, you go, oh, that smells like my favourite dish. And you look down at the floor and then there's rose petals all along the hall floor that take you into the lounge where there's a candle lit dinner for two waiting. And your loved one's waiting there and they say, oh, I'm so sorry. I just had this terrible feeling that you were going to end the relationship. And so I know that I've been making some mistakes and I've decided I'm going to promise I'm really going to pull my act together and I know I've let you down and I know I've probably not done the things that I've needed to do to make this relationship work. But you know what? I'm really going to change and I'm going to do things differently this time. Wow. I mean, if that happens, what would you do? Well, of course, you'd probably go, oh, great. This is all I wanted to hear. And But what happened to all of that stuff that you'd rehearsed? What happened to the day of angst? What happened to all of that stuff that you were about to say? Well, guess what? Gets put right back down. So the next time your partner slips up, 
And next time they go back to their old behavior, which is more than likely going to happen, suddenly, why this explosion of stuff and and you did, and then the script comes out, doesn't come out right, and it comes out wrong. And so that stuff, that swallowing of that stuff before um, the partner slips up again is what I'm talking about when we say incompletion, because you have had to swallow a lot of the stuff that you've wanted to say. Because people have told you you shouldn't feel like that, that you shouldn't feel bad, that there's no point in saying it because they're not here and they wouldn't want you to feel like that. Or they've gone, just move on, find yourself someone else or just keep yourself busy. Um, you're still young, you're still beautiful. You can just find someone else or there'll be some idea given to you about just getting on with it. But this stuff that you've had to swallow. That was just a small example, um, that story that I told you before. But this stuff that you've had to swallow it doesn't just go. It doesn't just kind of go melt away. It's still there and it can become an issue on top of all of the other issues that you've probably had from zero to now. Now, when I say issues, let's change the word issue for loss. So all the other losses I've spoken about this before but I'm going to keep talking about it because it's really important that you understand that grief and loss is cumulative and cumulatively negative so you have loss and loss and loss it doesn't just happen over here and over here and over here it's all on top of each other so the latest loss that happens is on top of everything else and it falls smack down in your lap again and you feel awful of course you do because it's a loss but it's on top of everything else so those losses, each of those losses you've gone through have a, have a communication around them. So that stuff that you wanted to say, <clears throat> I bet you haven't said it over anything. Or if you did say it, the person didn't agree with you anyway, or they died so you didn't get to say it. So when we talk about completion, when it comes to recovery from grief, this is the stuff we're talking about. And getting to say this stuff in the very specific way that we get you to do it is what kind of sets you free from prison. It gets you out of jail and it can bring you back into the present moment because you get to say the stuff from your past. You get to go through the losses of the things that you've gone through because you have to, or you can avoid it. You can spend the rest of your time waiting for time to heal you. Or you can just keep yourself busy and busy and busy and busy and busy waiting for time to heal you. Or you can stay strong while dying inside. You can replace the loss again and again and again and again and again. You can not try not to feel bad, but that's impossible when you do. So there are many strategies that we've learned to deal with how bad we feel. Um, and they don't generally work. If they did, um, then great. You know, and I, I hope that um, they do work for them. They, maybe they have for many people. But I know that the majority of people that I see and that I talk to, um, they're just getting on with life, half kind of half living with the half, the heart kind of half engaged. But guess what? If your heart isn't fully engaged, you lose. You lose because you don't get to experience joy and life and engagement in your relationships. Whatever relationship that is, whether it's with a romantic partner, whether it's in relationship with your children, whether it's in a relationship to your siblings, with the people at work, or your job, whatever you do, the only thing that matters is relationships. It's not stuff, it's relationships. So in order to have great relationships, guess what? You need to be fully engaged with your heart. So, and that's down to you because at the end of the day, it's only you that can help you. It's only you that can engage with your heart. You can't go out and fix everybody because that's not fixing you. And you can't fix anybody because they won't change. So, um, if you want to help yourself recover from any type of loss, if you are looking to create great relationships, if you're looking to find a great relationship, a romantic one, if you're not in one, or maybe you're looking to reignite and oomph some passion and some engagement into the current relationship that you have, then this course might just be for you. This might be the information that you need to either recover from a loss 
or to engage back into the relationships that you have in your life, whether that's your children or your romantic partners. If this is you and you'd like to get some more information or maybe talk to me one to one, then obviously in, on Facebook where this is being posted or if you're watching this on YouTube, go to my Facebook page. You can directly message me and it will come through instantly to my phone. Just send me a yes or send me, ask me to send you some more information and I will get back to you with some more information on how you can take the next steps to recover and transform your grief finally so you get to be free. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been great value to you and I look forward to hearing you um, either on Messenger or message me or look out for my next videos that will be coming shortly. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.